two weeks, as we'll keep reminding you, until Election Day. One foreign policy issue Democrats and Republicans can agree on is the potential threat China poses really in everything, whether it's technology, tariffs, trade, all the way to EVs and fentanyl. China is repeatedly cited as the biggest strategic challenge to the U.S., and no matter who wins in November, they will be tasked with managing those threats. An NBC News analysis of recent speeches and rallies shows that Vice President Harris and former President Trump are both ramping up their focus on China in the final stretch of this campaign. We have NBC News international correspondent Janice Mackey Fair joining us from Beijing with more on this. Janice, good morning. So when the candidates talk about how they propose to deal with the challenges presented by China, what are they saying and does it seem that one would be tougher than the other? Savannah, how Kamala Harris deals with China is likely to look a lot like the current administration's policy of stressing competition, avoiding confrontation, wanting to have communication so that there won't be conflict. Uh, Harris has actually talked very little about specific China policy in recent weeks. She talks mainly about China to criticize Donald Trump, saying that he sold out to China during his first presidency and uh, at the expense of American jobs, especially in auto manufacturing. Whereas for Donald Trump, it's all about tariffs, about slapping bigger tariffs on existing tariffs and framing it as a way to be tough on China. The most economists are saying it's U.S. consumers that will end up paying. Uh, more recently, he said that if he returns to the White House, China would, would not dare mess with him, uh, especially China's President Xi Jinping, because he knows he is, quote, crazy. Savannah. Does, you're, you're mentioning this, but, but let's talk more about the preference China could have for one candidate over the other. How would either victory play out here for this very tense relationship between the U.S. and China? Is there that big of a difference? Well, for China, there's actually very little difference between the two candidates when, when it comes to policies that, that shape and affect U.S.-China relations. Beijing is never going to admit to having a favorite candidate because they don't want to be accused of interfering in the election. But the leadership here is seen as preferring the incumbent party to ensure what they call policy continuity. Uh, I spoke about that with Jia Qingguo. He's a professor at Peking University and a political advisor to China's government. Here's what he said about China's preference. Chinese government does not want to interfere or be accused of interfering in American domestic politics. If you look at the challenges and, 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 and benefits and interests, then clearly, to me, uh, uh, Harris uh, posed a less uh, challenge and threat well, the, the leadership here, Trump is seen as volatile, and China wants stability. Uh, on the possibility of a second Trump presidency, Mr. Jia told me, quote, Americans cannot make the same mistake again. Savannah. Janice, a lot of times when we talk about China, misinformation, disinformation is part of the conversation, whether that be any type of influence they could have here at home, like, for example, on an app like TikTok, but also the type of information that is being fed to people who live in China. How is the U.S. race playing out on Chinese social media? Well, if you look at Chinese social media, you get a different view. It's Trump supporters that are mainly dominant because they seem to be less concerned with his policies than his political style. And, and they feel that because he's had this tendency toward alienating allies and, and tariffs, that this could all actually work in China's favor. There's actually a joke that his name translates loosely to Trump builds the nation, the nation being China, that a second Trump presidency would make China great again. And that's not to say that's the thinking of the political establishment here. They do prefer continuity, and that could come with the Harris administration even if that continuity is not the direction that China would want to go. So it's not so much wanting the lesser of two evils than wanting the more predictable option. Another point uh, that we should make on Chinese social media and the messaging is that a lot of it isn't the overt sort of pro-Beijing, pro-China messaging that you would expect on a mm. presidential election campaign. The messaging does seem to be focusing on the down-ballot races uh, where influencers feel they can have more of an impact on American voters. Well, it's quite interesting, especially because that's not always such a part of the conversation here in the U.S. that it would be even abroad. Janice, thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.